happen to those doors today? What will happen to those doors today? And as you are saying it, wherever the doors are, however long they have remained shut, by the word of the Lord, they shall be opened today. In the name of Jesus. Engage in the power of praise for supernatural turnaround, part three. And of course, you know anything we teach, we practicalize. So get ready for wilder. Amen. Every week has been increase of tempo. And today we'll praise him. And just like he opened those doors in Acts chapter 16, 25 to 26, at midnight hour. This is the midnight part of the year. Whatever doors have refused to open by your praise, they shall be opened. In the name of Jesus. Engaging the power of praise for supernatural turnarounds. Please let's understand this morning that we gain mastery in the kingdom by kingdom mysteries. We gain mastery on the platform of kingdom mysteries. Nobody ever gains mastery without having insight to some kingdom mysteries. That's how it works in this kingdom. In Mark chapter 4 verse 11, he said, and he said unto them, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. You can't be in the kingdom and have access to mystery and live in misery. Wherever there seems to be misery, it is absence of proper understanding of available mysteries. I've observed that in this kingdom, the more simple it seems, the more powerful it is. That's why complex people don't see much of God. The simpler it is, the more potent it is. You don't need to know Greek and Hebrew to have breakthrough. Breakthrough is breakthrough. Amen. <laughs> I don't need to tell you the Greek word, the Greek meaning, the Hebrew meaning, and confuse you. You came in confused, you are living more confused. But simple understanding. Somebody say simple understanding. Simple understanding. I can't hear you very loud and clear. Simple understanding. simple understanding. No wonder. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 11.3, he said, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This Bible is simple. Don't allow anybody to complicate it for you. It's simple. And how do you know you have gotten it? When it begins to work. When you put to work any scripture and you return back with testimony, then you have understanding. Shout amen. amen. May you understand praise in a way you have never done before. Amen. I didn't hear a louder amen. amen. A stronger amen right now. Amen. As simple as praise may seem, is one of the most potent weapons in the hand of the believer. He said to execute judgment. To execute judgment. Psalm 149. Praise as simple as it is is one of the most potent weapons. Potent weapons. And so that brother praised God and God gave him access to witty inventions. That's why I make bold to say, those who understand this mystery are never stranded. You can't understand what brings God down and God will come down and you are still stranded. Now, when it comes to the mystery of praise, understand the following. Number one, understand that praise is the gateway to supernatural harvest from our seed sown. Praise is the gateway to supernatural harvest from our seed sown. Praise is the gateway to supernatural harvest from our seed sown. No wonder I said, let the people praise the O Lord. 
Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Let me warn you, praise is not the seed. Praise is the water. No seed in the ground. You are praising. It's just like pouring water on a field. Praise is not the seed. Praise is the water. It waters the seed. Once you have seed in the ground, rain season is the most exciting season. You came to church today, maybe you were looking at the rain complaining. The farmer is whistling. The farmer is happy. Why? There is seed. I have good news for you. For all of your seeds sown this year, as you praise him this morning, you shall reap the harvest. Amen. I didn't hear louder, amen. amen. Joel chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Joel 1, 11 to 12. You find it there. He said, be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, hold all ye vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. There was seed there. But he said, the vine is dried up, the fig tree languishing, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Because the water. Now, can you truly praise God without joy? I don't think so. So the praise you are doing in anger has missed the point. It's like pouring acid. They look the same. The praise you are doing complaining, it looks like it's water you are pouring, but it's acid. Acid on the seed. So praise him with joy. How will you praise him this morning? I can't hear you louder. How will you praise him? Louder. How will you praise him? With joy. With joy. With joy. There are anointed murmurers. Please don't hang around them. There are people anointed to complain. I know anointing is transferable. If you hang around an angry man for a while, you become angry. If you hang around a joyful man, you become joyful. If you hang around a praiseful man, you become praiseful. So I select my environment. There are people that come to greet you, wisdom demands you run from them. Because upon their arrival, it's about what is not working for them. And what you thought was working for you, they will convince you to show you that it's not working. So what do you do? Depart from them. We planted differently. We will harvest differently. Shout amen. amen. So praise is the gateway to supernatural harvest of seed. So number two, mystery of praise we must understand this morning is that praise releases supernatural increase and multiplication. Please don't be mistaken. Where you are now is not the best of God. There are still realms of increase. There are still realms of multiplication. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. Jeremiah 13, 19 to 21. And the voice of them that make merry, I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I also will glorify them. They shall not be small. After today's praise, smallness dries up in your life. And so in John chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, Jesus lifted up the insufficient and gave thanks and became more than sufficient. Because in praise, supernatural increase and multiplication is released. Someone after today's praise, your status will change before next Sunday. I didn't hear the amen of someone that will praise you. Now, number three, very quickly, because I'm in a hurry for us to demonstrate. Number three, mystery we must understand about praise is that praise provokes supernatural breakthrough. Breakthrough. In Psalm 22, verse 3, he said, he inhabits the praises of his people. And when God is around, no wall can hold him. And so in Psalm 114, verse 1 to 9, when the seed tried to, I caught one heavy mystery. I, I'm not sure I'll share it now. Eh, hey, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> heavy. I'm still digesting it. On this scripture. Uh, leave this one. Let's go. When is time? I don't know when I will share Heavy mystery. Listen, when God told Moses, why are you crying unto me? Tell the children of Israel that they go forth. I'm ahead of myself now. Oh, God. Hey, yeah, yeah. 
Bible is sweet, oh. Ah, yeah. Listen, listen. You know why God said, go forward? I'm with you. When the sea sees me, I am. If God opens your eyes, now look at this. I'm here representing God. Somebody's here. Now, the gate is there. Every automatic door has a sensor. There is a distance it won't sense from. I can't stay here and expect an automatic. So God said, relax. Don't cry. I am with you. The door doesn't know you, but the door knows. Let's keep going to the sea. And as the sea saw him, the sea did what? God told me I had it from no man. He said, what you call a manual door to me is automatic. If I approach any door with you, the first automatic door we saw was in the Red Sea. America came late. We are not the ones that made the first automatic door. As the Red Sea saw him, the Red Sea did what? How do I know it opened? The Bible says and describes that the water was like this. The water was like this. It wasn't Moses the sea saw. It was the almighty, the way maker, the miracle worker, the door opener. As the sea saw him, the sea. Listen. God told me, he said, let me go with you. When that door sees me, hear what, I'm just hearing God now, I didn't, it's not written anywhere. There are some doors that won't open, there are some doors that will break. There are open doors, there are broken. After someone's fresh today, it will not be open door, it will be a broken door. Take your seat. I told you that that rema. It's like we should just close. God says, not just doors I will open, I will break doors. God cannot be with you and suffer breakdown. Number four, mystery of praise, is that if you are tired of the low places, praise is how to climb up. Praise is highway to high places. Habakkuk 3.17, he said, although the fruit tree shall not blossom, there may not be fruit in the vine. Everything may seem to have failed. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like Heinz feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places. Can I announce to somebody, between now and 1st of December, by the praise we are offering this month, God will elevate you. Maybe the person is on this side. I said God will elevate you. God will elevate you. Maryland, let your amen be very loud. God will elevate you. That means after this month, when people are looking for you, they will have to look up. They won't look like this. They won't look like this. Where will they look? The person that they will look up to. Where will they look? Shout it louder. Where will they look? It will make my feet like hinds feet, and I will walk upon my high places, not my low places. Not my regular places, but upon my what? And that word will be confirmed in somebody's life. Amen. Number five. Yako kako kada. Eyayato zando ta. Praise is master key to open doors. Hmm. Two instances. I know you've read it, but you may not have seen it. Acts 16, 25, and 26. Place it on the screen. And at midnight, this seems to be the midnight of the year. Paul and Silas pray. Comma. 
And then they say, hey, let's switch. We may die in this prison. Let's switch. So they switch to praise. And the prisoners did what? Had them. Had them. Now verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. There was an earthquake because God came down. When God comes down, the earth quakes before him. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, suddenly, immediately, suddenly, immediately. What happened immediately? All the doors were open. How many doors? I can't hear you. How many doors? Somebody shouted louder in second service. How many doors? How many doors are we talking about? Career doors? Healing doors? Marital doors? Fruitfulness doors? Financial doors? Immigration doors? How many doors? Now I caught something. If you keep reading, we won't read it this service. Maybe next week or next we may read. You keep reading, you keep reading. You know what happened? They will have died there after God opened the door. Then they now decided to ask them to be released. Isn't that not strange? God has already opened the door. Then if you keep reading verse 30 or so, verse 35, the magistrate sent to the sergeant, let this man go. You think you are the one that released us? <laughs> when God opens a door, which man will shut it? <laughs> listen, listen. I just heard something. When God opens a door and likes a man, you are forced to like him. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You are forced. The door is already open. So the magistrates had to open it. And if they locked it back, they knew how to open it. So they said, please just go. You have opened the door. The news has gotten to us. So please let this man go. Now look at John 11, 40 to 44. As Jesus gave thanks, you discover what happened. After Lazarus came back to life, right? Because of thanksgiving, he had to say, lose him. He's alive, but he's still bound. Lose him. Let him go. Behind thanksgiving, you can't have short doors. With praise, you can't have short doors. Therefore, I do know, between now and next week, Sunday, somebody here will stand upon this altar to declare, this is my open door testimony. That person, if you are here, your amen will be loudest. Your amen will be stronger. So I discovered that there is something about praise when it is behind closed doors. You may be closed when you start praising, but you can't finish praising and still be closed. Therefore, God told me, and I'm telling you, never allow your situation become a prediction of your reaction. You are behind closed doors. Don't let that situation predict that you will murmur. Never allow your situation become a prediction of your reaction. Let your reaction be the opposite of your situation. So you may be behind closed doors now. Praise like the door has opened because it must open. Amen. I didn't hear amen. amen. A louder amen. amen. If you look at how they praised in Acts 16, the Bible says the prisoners heard them. So private praise cannot lead to public victory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I decree, in this covenant of open doors, those doors shall be open. Amen. I didn't hear loud amen. amen. As you say amen, the door is blasted. Amen. Revelation 3 verse 8, it said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast had a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. In this service, I want to just show you two unstoppable keys to open doors. How many? And if we we'll do this too today, this coming Sunday, you are standing here to share your testimony. Yeah. The first unstoppable key to open doors is divine presence. What do we call it? 
Let me hear you louder. What do we call it? The loudest you can. What do we call it? Lift up your heads, ye gates. Psalm 24, 7 to 10. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, that the king. Do you notice he didn't mention your name? That the king, not that you. So if you are with the king on the same convoy, whatever opens to him opens to Open door is very simple. It's not complex. I know you like complicated things. I believe the simple truth. Now, how many of you have traveled with great dignitaries before? Even if you have not, you can imagine it. <laughs> just, Im <laughs> just imagine. Now, if you have ever been privileged to travel with people who are known, there's a way they treat you. Just because you are there. But go alone. The same people say, yes, sir. They look at you and say, stop here. You say, I came here last week. I was with this man. He said, you were with who? Now, is he here with you? The same people that were smiling at you and opening doors to you, when you are not in the company of the one they know, they molest you cheaply. That's how doors open in the realm of the spirit. Just go with God. Just allow his presence be around you. Even you will know this thing is not working because of me. It's working because of who is with me. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's open door. That is open door. No door, therefore, can be shut against us when we have God on our side. Please hear this. It's better to have God for you and the world against you. Never look for who to support you. If everyone is for you and God is against you, you will still fail. If God is for you and everyone is against you, you will still succeed. So which one do you prefer? Honor men, but don't glorify men. Divine presence. One thing I can't joke with is God's presence. If God is not in this service, we are just having a social garden. And there are many places where they just have social gathering on Sundays. How do you know it's a social gathering? No testimony. If God is in a place, the Lord our God in the midst of us is mighty. Please pay any cost for his presence. If you have to lose friends and gain God, please do it. I'm not telling you anything to make you clap. These are things I practice. There are people I look at and say, this one will take me from God. I run. Divine presence. I'd like you to see every door that seems closed as an automatic door. For those of you, the first time some of you came to the country, if you are true about it, the first day the door opened, you thought something was wrong. I heard of somebody, he just came to the States, doors opened. He said, ah, they are following me. <laughs> because he didn't, the one is used to, you wrestle. So he said, ah. He said, they are following me. Nobody is following you. The door sensed you. Amen. <laughs> I want to use you for illustration. Come, the one with glasses, come, come. Amen. Practical teaching. Listen. If I come to the office and everybody is queuing up to see me and I hold him like this. Follow, follow. Don't be afraid. Are you afraid? 
can my secretary ask me why is he following? If he's with me, protocols are broken. As long as I hold him, whatever fears me, fears him. Have you ever traveled with some very important personalities? You discover that they are everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not you. It's the one with you. If God Almighty is with Isaac, forget the doors. Because for the door to stop me, it must stop him. The Bible is simple. If you have God with you, who can be against you? Which door can say, who are you? When? Ah, yeah. The Bible says, I am the door. That's Jesus. You have not read the Bible? He's the door. So which door can claim not to know the door? The Bible is simple. If God is with you, the door, when it senses him, it opens. And what do you do? You walk in with him. Divine presence. You know what happened at the Red Sea? God said, why are you crying? Go forward. I'm with you. When the sea sees me, he knows who created him. And no wonder the Bible says, the sea saw him and fled. How can sea run? He said, what a led the old sea that thou art driven back? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He said, who did all these things? Amen. Please get God on your side. All these men you are looking for to help, you also need help. In Jesus' name. Go to your seat. Do you understand that? Now, every message is like a book. If you have been writing, you should have many books now. So, key number one, divine presence. Under that A, or number one, is we secure divine presence by our delightsome obedience. You can't be a goat and God will lead you. You know what I mean by that? You can't be stubborn. Everything God says you argue, you can't carry his presence. John 14, 21. He that had my commandment and keepeth them is he that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and do what? Manifest myself to him. B or two, depending on how you're writing, under divine presence. We provoke divine presence by following divine direction. So you begin by obedience. You provoke it by following every directive. Exodus 13, verse 17. Exodus 13, verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, Although that was near, for God said, lest paraventure the people repent when they see war and return to Egypt. But that's why it took them through the sea. <laughs> you can't go back to the sea and God is not there with you and the sea will answer you. So there are doors that must close. Listen to one thing God told me some months back. I was not in this branch then. He said, I will open doors for people and when they pass, I will close it. He said, why will I close it? Aside what I'm just sharing with you now, he said, I will close it so that nobody else will enter. There's a way God can change policies for two months for your sake. And the moment you pass, you don't know God, though. God is not just, okay, heavenly father, heavenly son. No, God is real. There's somebody I'm speaking to before this year is over. One strange door will open that only you will pass through. 
I didn't hear a louder amen. amen. Oh, talokoto. The second unstoppable key to open doors. Do you want to hear this one? Is the anointing. Anointing is not tied to I hope you know that. There are many people with titles who are not anointed. Anointing simply means enablement. Empowerment. All this shows that some people are raising up. It's not anointing. No. If it's anointing, you should have proofs. No proofs, trash the title. You know, I told you, by the time I leave, some things you will know that is the truth. All this running for, you are not in an election. If nobody is being blessed by you, you are not anointed. Okay. Isaiah 45, verse 1 to 3. God said to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I've holding, to subdue nations to him. I will lose the loins of kings and open. Aya. Look at it. I will open. Why? He's anointed. God said the Lord to his anointed. He's anointed. You can't be anointed of God and be stranded by men. Therefore, as this oil comes upon you today, the cyrotic grace that has doors wide open will be released upon you. I didn't hear somebody's loudest amen. You see, when God says, this is my anointed, forget his age. Forget his qualification. If God said, this is the one I want. Even if God picks a monkey, he will use him to heal. God said the Lord to his anointed, whose right hand have I holding? That takes us to the first one. How can you truly carry God without being anointed? I don't think so. Whose right hand I'm holding? That is who I am with. He said, to loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not what? Be shut. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give unto thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called you by thy name, I am the God of Israel. In summary, everything is an aftermath of the anointing. As you are anointed today, every door that needs to be blasted open shall be blasted open for you. I didn't hear your loudest amen. That amen can be louder yet. Secure his presence, get his anointing, and you are living in a realm of open doors perpetually. Now as we close, because we are going to praise him. Why praise when we talked about presence and anointing? Listen, two reasons. You praise to invoke his presence. He said you shall not need to fight in this battle. Invite me to the battle. Psalm 22 verse 3. The Lord inhabits the praises. Then 2 Chronicles 20, 17 to 24. You will not need to fight. Invite me. I live in praise. So sing. As they began to sing, God stepped in. So you invoke divine presence. By what? I can't hear you. By what? Praise. Louder please. By what? Praise. Now what of the anointing? Give thanks unto the Lord. Sing praises unto his name. Then he will now anoint you with fresh oil. So fresh oil answers to praise. Presence answers to praise. That's why we must praise him. Behind divine presence is praise. Behind the anointing is not the olive. It's praise. You praise him, the anointing is fresh. You praise him, his presence is ever abiding. Therefore, as we praise him today, the presence that will break those gates, 
the anointing that will come upon you and keep you in the realm of open doors perpetually is released upon you. I didn't hear louder, amen. A stronger, amen. Jump on your feet right now and make a joyful noise. Glory to God. How many are ready to praise him? And then after that, we receive the anointing. Thank you, Lord. 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 Gagatokato Garotosia. Oh, my God. He's here this morning. He's here this morning. He is here this morning. He is here this morning. As we get set to praise him. As we get set to praise him. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Now, what happened in 2 Chronicles chapter 20? Very simple. He said, you will not need to fight in this battle. Invite me to the battle. How did they invite him? By praise. So you can't talk about divine presence without talking about praise. Praise is invitation to divinity. When we praise him, we invite him to fight our battles. We invite him. And when we invite him, the door see him. And what happens? The automatic door. Are you blessed? The Bible is simple. It's not complex. I know you like complex message. No, simple. This week, impossible doors shall be open to somebody. I didn't hear the loudest amen. Listen to this. As we praise him in just a moment, every closed door in any area of your life, as an aftermath of this praise, they shall be automatically open. See and listen. Every case, humanly speaking, called an impossible case. Any door, humanly speaking, and they say, forget about it. They said that immigration matter, forget. They said that you should forget. They said that healing, you may just have to live with it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every humanly closed cases shall be opened by your prayer. Everyone suffering any form of delay in any area of their lives, as a result of this praise, that delay shall be terminated. And the kind of door that will open to you today, no man shall be able to shut it. As a result of this praise, I see policies changing for somebody. I see laws changing for somebody. I see decisions taken that will favor you. In the name of Jesus. The simplicity of the gospel is the cure to the complexities of life. You want open doors, his presence. You want open doors, the anointing. Among other ways, you cannot claim you have his presence without praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Why is his courts where he lives? That's where his presence is. If you want to look for him, go to his bedroom. His presence is present. And you'll do that by praise. Lift your hands and thank him for his word. Oh my God. Blessed be your name. To you alone be praise and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody blessed, and you know your doors are already open. And listen, not some doors. How many of the doors? How many of the doors? Including what people say cannot happen. How many of the doors? All the doors. Amen. Clap your hand if you know you are walking through your open doors.